Whatever you do, don't go into South Park Snow Day expecting more of the same. Are you gonna play or what? The same here being a sequel, both narratively and mechanically, to the franchise's two excellent turn-based RPG adventure entries to come out in the last 10 years. Instead, like most childhood snow days, South Park Snow Day is a flurry of high-intensity action that leaves you and your friends exhausted yet in sooner than you wish it did. Gone are the expansive, detail-stuffed, living episode story campaigns that made the stick of truth and the fractured butt hole so fun to explore and unpack, replaced instead by five multiplayer ARPG missions, most of which are really just a series of wave-based arenas that are broken up by gates that unlock after you kill every last everything. Die and it's back to the beginning, though as with most modern roguelites, you'll keep some currencies you can use to improve your individual stats for the next run. Whereas prior South Park entries focused on exploring the iconic and titular town and interacting with its many unhinged inhabitants, Snow Day is unapologetically a straightforward button masher that's only on occasion broken up by fairly low effort fetch quests or environmental hazards you'll need to blast your way through. Now, if you're a longtime fan and feeling a little low after this intro, chin up. There's still a lot to enjoy about Snow Day, as it's still very much an entry in the South Park saga. Most of the town's usual suspects are on display here, and watching Stan, Kyle, Kenny, and Cartman bicker in crisp 3D cutscenes about their respective fantasy kingdoms and their liberal interpretations of Butters' rulebook is endlessly entertaining. Well, not endless, I suppose, as one consequence of adding a dimension to the animation is subtracting from the story's total runtime. I zipped through Snow Day's enjoyable, if unremarkable, plot in about six hours, well short of the franchise's prior story-heavy entries, and much of that time was spent grinding through trash mob after trash mob. Luckily, the combat system itself is pretty fun. You'll start each run after selecting from a handful of melee and ranged weapons, picking a couple of utility skills that are tied to your pissed off adrenaline meter, and then choosing between several global bullshit cards like bubble shields or meteor showers that can quickly turn the tide of a battle. I spend most of my runs wielding the gap-closing dual daggers, an elemental wand, an AoE healing totem that can help revive your downed allies, and this putrid cat piss spray ability that temporarily flips baddies to your team. At the end of each arena, Jimmy will offer you an upgrade card that you can further buff if you slip him a toilet paper bribe, because people's priorities tend to change during an endless snowstorm, you know? At the end of each mission, each of which gets you closer to unearthing the mysterious cause of this apocalyptic blizzard, you'll face a boss, one of whom is a secret character the publisher explicitly told me not to mention. These boss fights deliver mechanical depth, challenge, humor, and spectacle, and each combines with Snow Day's above average soundtrack to make for a memorable end to each mission. Before wrapping up, I've seen some allegations swirling about Steam forums that this game is a microtransaction-riddled hellscape, and I can happily report that that's not the case. While the multiplayer-oriented Snow Day is a big shift for South Park Digital Studios, I completed the game without spinning a dime, and only once did the game tease some optional DLC my way. As the matchmaking servers were down while recording my pre-release review, I also got through the game just fine on my own, unless you count the autofill bots that seamlessly join your empty party at the start of combat encounters. In the end, Snow Day fails to live up to the lofty standards set by the stick of truth and the fracture butthole, but it's still a fun, funny little time that mostly justifies its $30 price tag. I'm giving Snow Day an aggregate mega score of 3.21 out of 5, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have about the game or my review. Until next time, this is Scope, and thanks for watching.